Welcome one and welcome all to your 17th favorite YouTube channel. If you're new here, I really hope that we don't embarrass ourselves too much. Today is a really special day. Today, we start the new era of the Kofi YouTube channel, a commentary channel. Now, if some of you know me through video essays, some of you know me through sports and video games, I, I do a lot of stuff, but I think a commentary channel is probably the best thing for this YouTube channel going forward. Now, I know there are some great commentary channels out there. Of course, shout out Jarvis Johnson, Drew Gooden, Danny Gonzalez, and I wanna be one of those two. And I know it's going to take some time because they are masters at their craft. I am just getting started at this. Please bear with me. Uh, it's gonna be some bumpy rides, a lot of bumpy rides, a lot of turbulence, but we're gonna stick the landing eventually. So yeah, I always wanted to give commentary channels a try, but the only thing was I didn't really know what to talk about. And then one day it hit me. I like sports, I like gaming, I like movies. So we're gonna kick it off with sports movies and not just any sports movie. We're gonna kick it off with one of the consensus worst movies of all time. So today we're starting with the movie, Ed. Now Secret Base did a video on Ed about four or five years ago. And while I do remember that video vaguely, I still have not seen this movie. So this is still a first time of me watching this movie. So I'm very excited. I'm going to link the Secret Base worst uh, video in the description as well. Go check it out after this one. Now this movie came out in 1996 and has a 2.7 rating on IMDb. For reference, Katz's IMDb score is a 2.8. Buckle in y'all because we're about to get seriously sad. So the IMDB description reads, a trained chimpanzee plays third base for a minor league baseball team. That's the entire description. Everything that we saw on the cover, there's nothing new here. So again, we're basically going in blind. I have no idea what's about to happen. Now, my first guess was that this movie was inspired by Airbud. However, to my surprise, this movie came out before Airbud. All right, so I looked it up on IMDb. There's a 1952 movie called Bonzo Goes to College where a chimp moves in with a college football coach. All right, then there's my personal favorite, the 1987 film Matilda, which a small time talent agent discovers an amazing boxing kangaroo. And I trust you, if we keep doing this series, we will get to this movie because that's gonna be so funny. The trailer had me dying already. Oh, did I forget that this movie stars Matt LeBlanc, AKA Joey from Friends? Yeah, when I saw that, I was surprised being like, wow, where could this movie go wrong? This was at the height of Friends, right? Okay, I've talked too much. All right, I'm gonna spend $3.99 on the movie because I have to rent it from Amazon. Let's just get it, let's just get started. This is about to get unhinged. So Joey from Friends is a baseball player on a farm and he can throw super fast, like. It's like, we need to see the radar gun on this because he shouldn't be in the barn. He should be on the mound immediately. Holy torpedo, Batman. I think we got a rocket arm. I don't even know why there's a movie. Like, what's the problem? He should be in the bigs already. Okay. Awful editing aside, I feel like we're already off to an amazing start and the movie just kicked off. Now, the surprising part about this is that Joey has said that he's never played organized baseball before. Not Little League, not college, not high school. So my question is, where the fuck did he learn to throw like that? Huh? All right, so apparently Joey is his humble far- the Okay, the main character is not named Joey, but I'm not going to address him by anything else. So Joey's his humble farmer kid that can throw absolute rockets. Can I get a sports science on that, please? Uh, John Brinkus, where are you at? Woo! 69! So before leaving for the minor league baseball tryout or season, he asks his dad for advice, and the movie already starts phoning itself in. So, uh, no advice? Work hard, son. Dad. Jack. Have fun. Dad, it's baseball. How could I not have fun? Now, at this point, 
I didn't know that we weren't going to see the parents again. So they were really just there for those lines. Um, Because I was thinking, wow, is anyone going to try in this movie? All right. So he gets to the baseball game and he's in a jam. And you can tell by the most 90s era sound effects of all time. <laughs> That sounded like if Scooby-Doo was caught in the Matrix. What are we doing? <laughs> Wait a minute, is that Jerry from Parks and Rec? This movie buried the lead. For those of you that never played baseball, the distance from the mound to the plate is 60 feet, six inches. So that dude hawked up a tobacco ball or spit 60 feet, six inches. I would be, I would be pooping bricks at that point, man. You can't, that's the most, one of, that's one of the most intimidating sports things I have ever seen. I got to hand it to him. This, this movie's off to a, f a fantastic start. It was a mean curveball over the plate. But from what I've seen, it ain't mean and it sure don't curve. God's sakes, tell me you ain't going to throw the curve tip. You ain't going to throw the curve tip. All right, from the start, a lot of people are phoning their line deliveries, and I get it because on the one hand, it's baseball, but on the other hand, it's a sports movie. Like sport, I a boring sports movie. Come on, I know we're in for some. some we're in. We're in for something. How far away is that diner? That dude just hit a 450 feet, bro. There are some people right now in this movie already that should not be in minor league baseball. The main character should be in the pros, and the and the person that just hit it to the next zip code should definitely be in the pros. I'm I'm trying to I'm struggling to see uh why they are not there yet. So after the game, the manager talks to the assistant coach and says that Joey from Fred's has a case of chokeitis. <laughs> chokeitis is a very delicate matter. That's not, that's not, I don't even think that's a thing in baseball circles. I thought it was like, you have the yips, right? I thought it was having the yips, right? I know this for a fact, because I typed in chokeitis and Google said, do you mean cholecystitis, which is the inflammation of your gallbladder? So I'm starting to wonder if the people that wrote the script knew anything about baseball. So then there's this front office executive that comes in and he says, Innovation, Chubb. Dad bought him from the estate of a Mr. Mickey Mantle. So I know some of you guys are asking right now, where does the chimpanzee come into all of this? Well, I have it. Don't worry. So this front office dude comes in and talks to the manager and he's like, look, I know sales are down, morale is down, and but I have an idea. And he hands the manager a book, but on the front of the book, it just says the plan. I, again, I'm asking, is anyone trying in this movie at all? And for those of you that are unfamiliar to baseball, there's a lot of stuff in baseball lore and legacy about luck, good luck or bad luck. So Joey just thinks he has bad luck when in reality, he just has a shit curveball. <laughs> That's pretty. It's just the curveball. Fastball is doing fine. Curveball. Mm. So then the manager sends Joey to pick up a special ball player, and then he goes to the bus, and who, who do you think it is? Wow. What a glove. <laughs> so Joey, in a panic, grabs a tire iron? What was he going to do with that? It's a chimpanzee. That chimpanzee would beat your ass. <laughs> Also, I looked up what the penalty for hitting a chimpanzee is on Google, and now I'm definitely on a watch list of some side. So now I get introduced to the chimpanzee, and with much sadness, I have to announce that it's a New York Yankees fan. I know. I thought we had a protagonist in this movie. I was wrong. Now I'm going to level with you guys. 
when I was younger and I saw like movies of animals doing like human like stuff where it was like apes playing hockey or something like that, I always thought that these were like some of the most highly trained animals of all time. I am now going to tell you guys that Ed is not a real chimpanzee. That is a that is a that's a human in a chimpanzee suit. What an idiot! <laughs> so now think about this as the movie goes on. I was lied to my childhood. You guys probably already knew this, so let's just continue. So Joey and the chimpanzee arrive at practice, and he is introduced by the coach as Mickey Mantle's monkey. But he's a chimpanzee. The movie description says he's a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees are not monkeys. So the chimpanzee is originally asked to be the mascot. And of course, as written in the script probably, hilarity must ensue for a certain amount of time before we get to the next scene. Nice monkey, okay. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh -oh. <laughs> And it gets to this part in the movie where you realize that the whole monkey versus chimpanzee thing is going to be a big setup to a ultimate joke. Um, you get a lot of Curious George references back to back to back in a short amount of time. And I wish I was making this up. <laughs> I do like this part of the chimpanzee just obliterates his teammate, his new teammate. He's like, I heard you talking shit. Well, what do you expect? He's an animal, chub. It's not like he plays ball or anything. Oh. Head! <laughs> no, cool. It's not like he plays ball or anything. So if you haven't noticed already by this movie, the chimpanzee really loves baseball. So the players indulge him by serving him a ground ball. And this is what happens. So there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, was the smoke really necessary? <laughs> Second of all, that dude is a little too nonchalant about his hand being on fire. Anyone that's played even like baseball, slow pitch, softball knows that if you if you catch a screamer, your hand is going to hurt. He's like, oh, cool. My fingers are on fire. No, 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 no. Are you OK, my boy? But now, since this movie has to move on and have some conflict, everyone on the team is cool with Ed, except for Joey. You're kidding, right? I mean, no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Hey, cool. Look, remember, biologically speaking, he's this close to you and me. Okay? And, and ain't much to being a ball player if you're a ball player. Look at Zon. <laughs> and again, Joey doesn't really have a reason to be mad at Ed. They are not competing for the same pitching spot. If Ed was a pitcher and throwing those rockets, I understand the hatred. I understand being jealous, even though they're both absolute flamethrowers and they can definitely coexist on the same team. But Joey has no reason to be bad at Ed the chimpanzee. Oh yeah, the chimpanzee's name is Ed because uh, Joey just goes, oh, Ed, whatever. Which is odd because I feel like Mickey Mantle would have named the chimpanzee. But again, this is a 2.7 IMDb movie. So then Joey has a conversation with the manager about just trying to focus and then start showing the worst breaking balls I've ever seen. Like, bro, you can throw a different pitch. You don't have to throw a curveball. There are so many different pitch types in Major League Baseball. You could throw a changeup. You could throw a slider. You could throw a knuckleball. You don't have to throw the curveball. But the entire movie is just like, hey, man, he can't throw the curveball. Then don't do it. So next, the coach rigs a toothpick game, and Joey has to end up uh, room rooming with Ed the chimpanzee. Um, and of course, Joey's not on board. Yeah, I wonder which one I'm gonna get. So Joey's being a complete jerk to this chimpanzee, and then the obvious love interest, who happens to live in the same complex, 
I love how neither of them are shocked that a chimpanzee is there. They're just like, yeah, this is the minor league baseball town. We've definitely seen Reader. <laughs> so then they talk for what I think is the first time and the script, oh. You know, uh, most people just get a dog. He's pretty cute. Do you like back hair? Works on him. I'm making spaghetti. Honey, there's one more bag in the car. Could you go get it? So now that they're back in the apartment, the movie turns into very low bar chimpanzee jokes. Some of the worst sound effect work I've ever seen. And Joey just talking like he is a Red Dead Redemption 2 NPC. Get down. Get down off of there. Get down. Come on. No. no. Oh, not my bathroom. Don't you do it. Oh, bad monkey, bad. Damn it. Get out of there. I can't tell if Joey's trying his best to keep it together or he just wants the movie to be over. It, it's probably a little bit of both. What is? What even is the sequence? I don't remember the 90s that much, but I know that chimpanzee toilet humor was not going to get the meter running. So we get back to baseball action where Joey is on the mound getting lit up again. He ignores his catcher sign and opts to throw the curveball, which again, why doesn't he just learn another pitch, bro? Again, like I said, the movie has to have like something. Also, when is Ed coming into the game? That's the only reason why I'm here. I'm not here for Joey throwing awful breaking balls that get lit up to the moon. So after this game, the manager and the assistant coach have a game where they coin flip to see if people on their team will make the majors. And when it comes to Joey, the coin just like stays on its side and obvious special effects here. Um, but then they put a cup over the coin and be like, oh, we'll just see where the fate lands it. And I, I'm honestly, let's get back to the toilet monkey sorry chimpanzee humor toilet chimpanzee humor you see i'm doing it now ah anyway you know what this movie needs more chimpanzee hijinks uh going through this now i'm actually really sorry that i made my editor watch this movie and he worked really hard on this video and he deserves the best especially after i just made him watch this awful movie <laughs> so then we go back to joey again refusing to throw the curveball and man i'm telling you whoever wrote this script there are just other pitches man i used to throw a curveball when i pitched in little league and you know what i stopped doing it because it hurt my arm you don't have to live like this joey so now since this movie needs to continue, the third baseman gets hurt on one of the most casual pop-ups I've ever seen. Like, he shouldn't be in the game if he's messing up that badly, honestly. So now we get to the part where the manager has to sub in a player, and there are usually 25 people on a baseball team. So you have, you have people to sub in. It's not like there's no one else but the chimpanzee. But the coach just goes, ah, screw it. Let's put in the chimpanzee. And I don't know how I would feel if I was a minor league baseball player knowing that I got passed over to be put in the game for a chimpanzee. But here's the thing. The opposing manager is suddenly against having the chimpanzee in the game. And for that manager, I would say... What do you have to lose? It's not like you've seen a scouting report and know that this dude is good. This is such a problem for the manager that he gets ejected over it. And then <laughs> the umpire just gives us random propaganda. Baseball is America's game. Oh, we just love good old fashioned America's pastime propaganda. <laughs> On the first pitch, the chimpanzee pulls off an unassisted triple play, and the coaching staff is way too chill about this. For those of you that don't follow baseball, an unassisted triple play is one of the rarest plays that you could pull off in baseball, period. 
and Ed just pulled it off on the first pitch, the first try. If I was a coach, I would be losing my absolute mind. So as you can figure out what happens, Ed becomes a huge hit and even Joey can't be a hater anymore and starts to turn around his opinions and views on the chimpanzee. Good for him. And now we're treated to our favorite part of a sports movie, the sports montage, where it's just like, we have to just get to the next part of the movie. There are way too many games for us to cover. <laughs> it's baseball. We're going to be here for a while. Ed ends up on Sports Illustrated, all of these magazines. And again, why isn't he in the majors already? We already saw him catch someone's glove on fire. I would have called him up already. But gotta have some movie so a thing i forgot to mention earlier is that there's an inevitable cut day that's looming and it's been looming for about 30 minutes of the movie and the whole tension is supposedly supposed to be that joey could potentially be cut but in the end it only turns out that one player on the team actually gets cut uh and they go to a bar and like toast to him now what happens next um so joey gets super drunk and can't drive home you know where i'm going with this <laughs> I think the wildest part about all this is that they get home safely, don't drive drunk, and definitely don't let a chimpanzee drive you home while you're drunk. Why is this in the movie, bro? Now the movie decides to push the love interest plot forward because again, this is how the movie has to go. Watch how they introduce this whole, why don't you date my mom thing. I do like your mom. Then why haven't you asked her out? That's the love interest daughter. I actually don't know the love interest. I don't know either of their names at this point. And they spend the next two to three minutes and the daughter is like, why won't you date my mom? And Joey's like, well, I got to figure out how to pitch this curveball for her. However, apparently the rest of the team gets too drunk for practice and the coach tells Joey to go have fun. Go have some fun, bro. And so he ends up taking the bomb out on a date anyway, even though Joey was like, I have to focus. And the coach was like, no, the movie must go on. <laughs> so Joey shows up to the love interest house again with negative drip. He has the fashion that Joey wears in this movie is just all negative drip it's bad and the mom leaves the child with the chimpanzee and this is a trope in a lot of movies where it's like the grown-ups are away what could possibly go wrong with the with the kids that are left by themselves in the house so again in parentheses hilarity ensues So usually during some of these sports movies where there is a love interest, there's a turning point where the love interest gives a nice little speech or a conversation and the player has a new outlook on life. But instead of that, we just have an awkward shot of them slow dancing outside of a carnival. <laughs> what? But why? Joey and Lydia get back from the date and the chimpanzee and the kid have completely trashed the place, but in superhuman fashion, sorry, super chimpanzee fashion, they clean the entire apartment in about two minutes. So there are 30 minutes left in the movie and after one date, Joey is back to pitching well, uh, the team is winning and everything is good and they're going to the championship. However. We've reached, I think, the third act, which means that something must happen to have a conf You must have a conflict in the movie and then there must be a dilemma, right? Um, you're not going to guess what the conflict is. 
Actually, yeah, no, give me, y'all give me a second. Guess what the conflict is? I'll, I'll pause the video, wait for five seconds. Did you guess that Ed gets kidnapped? So the movie wants to make you think that Ed absolutely straight up gets kidnapped, but then it's uh, revealed that the front office dude from like an hour ago uh, sold him, sorry, traded him the day before the championship game, which is just a bad GM move. Why would you trade your best player before the championship game? And, uh, and of course, Joey is now turned around being like, he's not an animal, he's a ball player. Because at first, Joey was like, he's just an animal. So we've seen the growth. So now Joey, Lydia, and the kid are all sad. They're at the diner that Lydia works at. And usually, this is the part of the movie where the love interest might have a good idea. But the love interest just suggests that Joey go steal Ed back <laughs> from whoever they got traded to. Kirby sold him. What do you want me to do? Steal him back? Yeah. There's an idea. And then she compares it to her daughter being kidnapped. She said, if my daughter got kidnapped, I would be searching all over for them. I have to reiterate that that was a trade. He got sold. That was a trade. One of these things is a crime. The other is not. <laughs> so Joey goes back and looks for Ed, finds Ed, and Ed is being tortured and put in a clown costume. So I, okay, I take it back. They're both crimes. These are both crimes happening, but now I'm on the side of Joey crimes. For the next five minutes, this turns into an action movie in a where Joey gets his ass kicked by one of the thugs. But apparently, Ed can just bend the metal and break out of his cage. So I think that Ed could have soloed those two by himself but was just being nice. And then finally, after an hour and 13 of movie time, the whole monkey chimpanzee thing finally pays off. Or at least that's what they think. That's probably what they wrote. They were like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> nice monkey. Oh. He's a chimpanzee. Animal. Ed escapes, and Joey now has to find Ed, who's in the back of a frozen banana truck because, of course. Right before Ed freezes to death, Joey causes a traffic accident that saves his life, and Ed is then transferred to the hospital. So this movie has taken a wild right turn twice in like the last 10 minutes. But Joey can't stay at the hospital because he has a game to pitch. He shows to the ballpark in the nick of time and tells the rest of the team what happens and they're out here to win it for Ed. And midway through, one of the team members suggests that uh, they go kill Kirby. Ed's in the hospital. It's touch and go now. There's nothing we can do. We can kill Kirby? All right. Yeah. 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 All right, but after the game. And I didn't know who Kirby was, and I had to go look up on IMDb that Kirby was the toupee guy. So this, what this movie does is this movie will like introduce a character for a while, but she like won't know their name for like 40 to 50 minutes. So anyway, the game starts, and with the first pitch, this is what pisses me off the most out of the movie. So the game starts with the first pitch, Joey throws a fastball, and I quote, 125 miles per hour. What's that say? For those of you that are not familiar with baseball, like the fastest pitches in baseball history are like maybe 107, 108. 
Hi, future Kofi here, as you can tell by the improved background setup. Uh, past Kofi was lying. It's more like 105 miles per hour. I do not know what that man was thinking. Uh, throwing 100 miles per hour is a big achievement that not many pitchers uh, get to. 125 miles per hour. And I, th I thought that maybe it was kilometers per hour, but that just translates to a 77 mile per hour fastball, which is not that fast. My whole thing was now that we know that you throw a 125 mile per hour fastball, why were you even messing with a curveball? Why were you just throw the heat? No one can hit that. What are we doing here? Like at least make the movie make sense in a baseball standpoint. If the movie made sense from a sports standpoint, I would be on board, but now we're just not making sense. Does the movie get back down to earth? No, we then see the most precise foul ball I have ever seen. When did these minor league baseball players suddenly turn into freaking superheroes? Hitting a baseball is one of the hardest things you can do. Aiming it with that pinpoint precision, it's impossible. But the thing is, right after he hits that foul ball, he then hits into a double play. What, what, is, what is this movie? Are the players good or not? So now in sports fashion, we have to get Ed to the ballpark, but how? He is down for the count. So take your guesses. Did you guess that the daughter would put a baseball glove on top of Ed and that would resurrect him? I can't make I can't make this up. I can't. So Ed is on his way back to the game, and Cooper has thrown nine innings of a hundred mile per hour fastball. Like I don't know how his arm is still on him at this point, and the coach is about to sub him out for the last batter. Ed shows up. Ed shows up to the stadium, and he gets a standing ovation. And the coach goes, "I'm gonna let you stay in." Barnett! Just do one thing for me, huh? Win. Th those two situations, those two circumstances are not correlated. Ed showing up doesn't mean that Joey's arm isn't about to freaking fall off. You are risking the championship on this decision. And the reason why he was going to pull Joey from the game is because he's facing the same dude that hit the ball to the freaking diner that first time. He's like, yeah, this dude has your number. Sees Ed and he's like, well, actually, never mind. We have to finish this movie somehow. Since there really aren't that many unwritten rules in baseball, Joey now calls a timeout and then goes up to the stanchion and asks for a kiss from Lydia mid game, by the way. I, I just don't know anymore, man. I. All right. So Joey gets to an 0 2 count after on the second pitch. This dude absolutely smashes the ball, barely foul. And you know what it's time for? It's time for the curveball, apparently. It's time for the curveball that he doesn't really need to throw because he throws 125 miles per hour. So he throws the curveball. The curveball strikes him out. You know what's weird about this is that everybody is like the curveball is coming. I feel like the hitter should have known it too. Skill issue. Anyway, so he throws a curveball, strikes him out and they win the championship. And Tommy Lasorda, the manager of the Dodgers, is like, I want him in LA tomorrow. Of course, he moves to LA with the love interest and the daughter. And of course, Ed is in the back. And that's how this movie ends. At watching this movie, it was, it, was the, it was one of the worst sports movies I've ever seen, but I don't think it was no, I'm lying. It was it was pretty bad. Is it one of the worst movies of all time? Yes. But I do think that there was definitely some potential here in terms of the fact that if you just ask someone that knew about baseball before and made it a little bit more realistic, you could have taken it a little bit more seriously. The chimpanzee lighting the glove on fire makes me be like, okay, is this really triple A baseball or not? Also, of course, the chimpanzee toilet humor scenes ran on for too long like it's just unfunny joey is doing his best 
with a script this bad and i it's just awful all around you know i just i i really feel bad um does he help make the movie better no you could have subbed him in for any other actor and the movie would still be bad so this movie was beyond saving from the jump and that's all i gotta say about it i hope you enjoyed this first commentary video on the channel uh if you're new here feel free to subscribe and tap the bell icon for more commentary channel videos that are coming in the future and definitely comment on what sports movies i should watch next Feel free to follow me on my socials in the description and follow my editor. And I will definitely see you guys next time and have a good one. Bye.